management meeting sent to you. So just to let you know that everybody has been muted uh, upon arrival, and if you have any questions, you can just use the Q&A on your Zoom controls. And a copy of this meeting will be sent out uh, tomorrow afternoon, so if you need to share it even with some other people in your organization, you can do it that way. So today's webinar is financial management, the importance of linking and report reconciliation. So just a few housekeeping items. Uh, as always, if you need to get hold of us right now, especially during the uh, COVID-19 crisis, as soon as you log into your help center, you will see at the very top a red icon, and that will give you all the resources for everything to help you navigate through this time. Uh, it also includes some how-tos on how to get things set up, uh, there is a link there on your financial reporting. And also, as well, you may have already received and looked at some of the amazing enhancements that our product team has been able to push out the last week. Some of them are brand new. Some were part of our 2020 uh, product roadmap and vision that they've kind of fast-tracked for everyone. Um, as well, if you ever get stuck for ideas, especially where everybody runs a little bit differently, you can reach out to our Facebook users group. So on Facebook, you can just search Jackrabbit Software Users. And if you are a Care Edition, you would just search for Jackrabbit Care Users. As well, uh, you can reach us on Instagram and Twitter at Jackrabbit Tech. As well, all of those amazing videos that you see in the Help Center, they are available on our YouTube channel. So if you want, you can search us there and subscribe to our videos. And especially right now with all the enhancements, those little intercom messages in your database that pop up in the bottom uh, right hand, you just might want to take an extra quick look at those just because where things are starting to evolve so rapidly. So Tammy, are you there? I am here. How's it going? It is going good. So I'm just going to let everyone know our agenda that you'll be going over today. Tammy will be going over linking feeds, finding unlinked feeds, relinking your fees, reconciling reports, and then at the end we will have some time for questions and answers. Take it away, Tammy. All right. So hang on just a second we're going to swap sharing so I can get the database up there and we're going to just dive right on in all right Marie can you see me now I can I can see your database all right, so awesome. Thank you so much, Marie, and thank you to everyone joining us today. Um, we're super happy to have you here. Um, I know I am in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, and I am super happy to have some sunshine today. Um, the pollen's still raining down, but uh, it's fun to gather together collectively uh, via Zoom and uh, join in a little bit of learning fun. So as Marie said, um, we're going to talk about uh, linking and uh, looking at your reconciling reports. Um, report reconciliation um, and linking within Jackrabbit are so important to good financial management in your um, database and for your business. When you talk about linking fees, um, specifically in Jackrabbit, a payment is linked or apply to an unpaid fee. You guys are going through this process on a regular monthly basis. Um, so you post your fees and then you process your payments. And linking is kind of what happens on the back side of it. Um, a good analogy is you marry that fee to a payment. So you know that the $50 fee um, for the ballet class was paid for by the $50 check that came in. And you're linking those together. And when linked together, the payment transaction takes on the category one of that linked fee. So if you 
say you've got a, a category one set up for ballet or tumbling and you post that class fee, that fee is going to have a category one of ballet or tumbling or whatever you've named your specific category one. Um, we always talk uh, in the basics or the essentials class that your category ones are like buckets of um, that hold your money, the way you want to track your revenue as it comes in. So when a payment's made, that payment takes on the category one of the linked fee. And then when you run your revenue reports, that category one is where that money is going to show up. Any fee that's posted um, or doesn't have a category one is going to be considered unapplied or uncategorized. And then payments that are not linked to fees are referred to as unapplied credits. And I'm going to show you some examples of both of those. And your payments are going to show up on your revenue report if they're not linked to anything they're going to show up as unapplied payments and because they're not put into any revenue category and good financial management within jackrabbit is going to um really uh just uh help you if you've got everything in its proper little bucket. So good financial management means you want to find those unapplied credits and unpaid fees and get everything linked up so it falls in the proper bucket when you're looking at your total revenue received. Your revenue reports that we're going to look at today are generated and organized by payments and their respective category ones. You can go in and require that all new fees posted have an assigned category one. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I get a little forgetful or I'm multitasking and miss details. This is a great way to make sure that someone in your organization can't post a fee and forget to select a category one. First thing you want to do with that is go to tools, edit settings. And if you scroll down, you've got a section called transaction settings. And the very first option is require category one. You want to make sure that that is the radial button for yes is selected. That means anytime anyone posts a fee in your organization, it has to have a category one before it's saved. And I will tell you that has saved me a ton when I'm in a hurry and setting things up or demoing things because I'll want to skip a step and get right to submit and it pops up and says a category one is required. So this is going to help a, you go a long way with making making sure those category ones um, are assigned when you post a fee. The next thing you can do is you can decide what the payments are applied to. When you process a payment, the payment module, and we'll look at this in more detail, gives you the option to choose which fees the payment goes to if more than one fee is owed. And that's great. You might want to pick certain ones, but maybe again, you're multitasking. You don't want people to forget. You can go ahead and use the apply payments too. So as soon as you hit save, it's going to follow that rule and apply that payment to the fees automatically. So it's going to link it for you so you can't forget. Your options for this are to post it to oldest fees first. So if a parent or a family owes maybe $300 and it's for five or six different classes, but they only pay you 200, if oldest fees first is, is selected, when that $200 payment is linked, it's gonna link it to the oldest fees there and whatever is the newest is gonna still be owed. And same thing, you can do oldest fees first within the last 12 months. Um, I will say for me personally, I don't see this as much anymore for organizations uh, that have been with us a really long time before linking was required in a part of the database. Um, you might have some old fees out there from 2013 or 2014 that were never properly linked. Um, what that does is it ensures that uh, the linking looks only at the most recent payments. If you're ever in your database and you find some old fees from, you know, a number of years ago and they don't match up, that is something absolutely positively reach out to support and our support reps can help you clean up. 
um, or get you started on the path where you can work on it yourself. And you have the option for newest fees first. I posted fees last week. I posted fees today. When a parent makes it, start with today's and then hit them as they get older. So again, this is your choice, but if you select one of these here, then it's going to help do that linking automatically. All right, so let's go in. It's a little bit of what linking is and why it's so important, but let's look a little bit how to see them, um, how to recognize what you're looking for. So I want to start off with the Alexander family. I've got a few of these set up and pulled up already so you can see what we're looking for. How to see a linked fee when you're in a database. You can go to a specific family. We're looking at the Alexander family and click on the little chain link icon where the payment is. You can also do it by the fee. I like working from the payments personally because usually you have lots of little fees, $25, $150, 80 and one big payment. So if I click that link, it's going to pop up a modal that tells me this one payment of $653.50 and none of it was unapplied. That means they used all of it was applied to all of these fees here. And that shows you what a fee or how to see a linked fee. That's going to show you what your fee is linked to. Sometimes it's nice just to come in and make sure, particularly for those of you that post fees on um, for multiple things. Maybe you post tuition fees, you post uh, costume fees, you post competition fees or meet fees. Um, it's going to help you see what those different fees are for and help your parents see that when they pay a certain amount, they know what it's going for as well. So the linking is going to organize that. If you want to see an unpaid fee, we're going to look at the Davidson family. So we've got your legend at the top. Unpaid fees are highlighted in pink. You can see that the Davidson family had tuition posted on March 1st for a lyrical and contemporary class and a ballet class. Their balance is still $90 and those fees haven't been paid yet. So if you were to actually look, um, we can go back and look on the um, 31 to 60 days. You can see that that family, because it's April, if we click on that report, that family, the Davidson family owes $90. So that's going to show up on my aged account. It's an unpaid fee that needs to be, pay Ooh, needs to be paid. So let's go back um, to the family's page specifically. And it's going to show up highlighted in pink. An unapplied credit, if we look at the Morales family, you can see here they've got a balance. Hang on, I'm trying to highlight. My cursor's sort of kind of agree. There we go. Um, of negative 250. And if you look at their uh, transaction history, you're going to see that on the 31st, the first payment made was for $1,900.84. That is, gave them a zero balance. And if you click on the link for that payment, you can see that it's applied to every single one of those fees. They had um, had a lot of fees accruing and didn't pay them until all at once. Maybe they had some special circumstances and your organization said, okay, we're going to just carry the bill until you can pay it. Um, and they paid it all at once. But you see there's also a payment on the 31st. And in the note, grandparents paid extra for future fees. So there is a $250 unapplied credit on that account that needs to be linked up to something. Um, one of the things that you need to keep in mind, if a parent or a grandparent or someone pays ahead, they pay more money than they owe, it's going to show up as a credit on the account. And that credit will never auto link to fees paid or posted later. So next time we post April, when we post April's tuition, um, if there is tuition due for April for $250, the account is going to zero out. The balance will show zero because your math, your pluses and your minuses always work together. 
but you're still going to have some green and some pink and you're going to have to link those payments. If you post the fee and then process the payment, those settings we looked at right at the beginning are going to auto link that for you. If there is a credit or extra paid on an account and then you post the fee, you've got to go backwards and make sure you link that. So it's really good. One of the things we're going to look at shortly is how to find those unapplied credits and link those before you process new payments. So we're going to um, help you get into the habit or help you find ways to clean things up before you process new payments so your linking um, always stays current and your reports are giving you the most accurate information. All right, so I want to look at the Kennedy family for a moment and show you what it looks like to have. Again, I mentioned you could have a zero balance. The Kennedy family doesn't owe anything. You can see that here, but they've got an unapplied credit for $125 and three unpaid fees that uh, look like they don't match up. And what you can see here is this is just where they weren't linked. Um, we're going to come back to the Kennedy family. I want to leave them like this, but this is what it's going to look like um, to see an unpaid fee and an unapplied credit on the transaction history of a family. So we're going to go to the Smith family because I'm going to come back to the Kennedy family in a little bit and clean them up. Let's look at the Smith family. This family looks absolutely amazing. Everything looks great um, and they have no balance due and I see no pink and green. But if you look at this, you can actually see again, there was on the first a tuition fee posted for $50 and on the 31st, a t-shirt was purchased for $19.22 and this student did a draw a 60 minute drop in class for $20. And there were two payments made. First, the 3922, which is the 1922 plus the 20, and then a $50 payment here. Well, if you go in and you check the linking and again, this is really up to you and depending those of you who've been in a webinar with me before or met me in person i've told you i'm type a i want everything to match up like apples to apples oranges to oranges so if i go back in and look at this i can see that tuition fee and what it's linked to is um 39 dollars 22 of that $50 fee was paid. Well, hmm, that looks a little curious to me. So I'm gonna check this extra payment of $50 and I see that it's linked to the, le the leftover $10.78 that wasn't covered by the first payment plus those two. So it looks like when the payments were made, they were paired up to the wrong ones. Well, you can fix this. And this is one of the things I want to show you as part of the process for cleaning up your database. And we're going to look at also how to go back. When we go back to the Kennedy family, we're going to match those up from scratch. So if you go in and we look and click on the blue edit pencil of that $50 payment, you see something down at the bottom called unlinked fees. And if I unlink that, it's going to ask you um, unlink payments from all link fees. It's not changing anything. If you notice your balance is zero, if I click OK, it tells me they're all unlinked. I'm going to close that window and you can see that now I've got green unpaid or excuse me, unapplied credit and pink unpaid fees. And I'm going to do the same thing with the next payment, the 39.22. And you're getting a little warning here. It's already been applied. You can't change the amount. So you're not gonna be able to mess that up. I'm gonna click okay. And now you can see, let's close that window. You can see that both those payments are unapplied credits. And these are all my unpaid fees. The balance is still zero. If I click this green button, we skipped it out in the other families, um, you're gonna actually see that these families don't match up or these um, payments are not linked to anything. If I click on that link button now from here or the main screen, it says no linked records for this transaction. 
Well, now you can pair them up the way they're supposed to be. So go back to that blue edit pencil, and I'll tell you a secret. You really could have done this all the first time when the window was open once everything's unlinked. Um, but we're going to do it this way, and you're going to click on reapply payment. This is the $50 tuition payment, and it's going to show you the options you have. You can apply to oldest, you can click the apply to oldest fees first, and that's going to apply to this $50 one. If you click apply to newest fees first, it's going to apply it to the first two in full first and whatever's left over to the next one. So you can choose that or you can just click your cursor in the one you want and it's going to populate that amount there. When you do that, you save your payment and ta-da, it disappears from this transaction search screen. So now you're left just with the 3922 payment and those go to those. So you're going to click on your blue edit pencil again and reapply that payment. And again, you can apply to oldest fees, apply to newest fees. I like to just click my cursor in there and save the payment. So now when we go back to our transaction history, this button's no longer green, and if I click on the link, it's showing that that $50 payment goes to the tuition for that $50 class. So we just cleaned up, we unlinked and reapplied payment for the Smith family so that they're now clean and everything's the way it's supposed to be. So when we look at that revenue report, we can see what portion went to tuition, what portion went to merchandise, et cetera. So what causes these unapplied or uncategorized fees and payments in Jackrabbit? Sometimes a payment can be posted to a family or account and it's either not linked to a fee or it's linked to a fee that doesn't have a category one. We've done, our developers, um, our engineers have done a great job trying to close, close up as many of those loopholes as possible. So it's not possible to do a lot of those, but sometimes if it's an older transaction, you could have saved something and forgotten to put a category one um, or not link the fee. Um, you also can, you see what I cleaned up here, you can have a payment linked and unlink it and oops, forget to link it later. If I were to forget with the Kennedy family, if I were to move on my merry way and forget to go back and relink these, that's gonna show up on reports for the future. So that's something good to keep in mind. Sometimes it's like the um, an overpayment can be made, a parent owes you $250, but they pay you $300, and um, there's a credit on the account, and you don't realize it. Maybe they did it through the portal, and you don't realize there's an extra $50, and you never go link it. You just keep posting fees, and then sometimes it can be like the Morales family where they've paid extra, and you just haven't gone back to link it yet. So it's really important with these situations to go through and try to find those unlinked fees before you do the next month's posting tuition and before you do the next month's or the next time's processing credit cards. So I want to look at that for a moment. There's a couple of different ways that you can do that. One of the ways is to go um, use the paid fees report. I recommend running this on a regular basis. Go through and look for um, things where that might not be applied yet or might not be linked. So you go to reports, transactions, financials. Paid fees report is right under the recommended. I have it saved as a favorite report with a little heart by it because I use it so frequently. If we go in and we look at the paid fees report, I'm going to run it for the month of March and just include the um, beginning and end dates. That's one thing that's really important. We're going to talk about report reconciliation. You really want to make sure that you um, keep your date range consistent if you want your reports to be consistent. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to go with that and I'm going to hit submit. So I'm running a paid fees revenue report. What money was paid to me in March? And you can see on the paid fees summary, you've got your date range up here. It's broken down by category one for me. These are my category ones in my database. 
If I scroll down to the bottom, I can see two different things here. I've, my revenue for March was $8,260.11, and I have something called unapplied payments for $250. Well, maybe I don't remember what we just looked at, and I'm like, oh, wow, what's unapplied that I don't know about? I took in $250, but it's not listed to anything or linked to anything. So you can go back to this report, to the paid fees, use that same date range, scroll down to the bottom and change show detail to yes. And now this exact same report is gonna be filled in with all the dates and names of the people who made those payments. So ballet is broken down individually by the parents and the amounts they paid. And this is a long report. It does that for every single one of them. Sometimes you need this amount of detail when you're reconciling and trying to find money. So I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can see that 826011 is still the same, but this unapplied payment section, it actually tells me it's the Morales family. It was a payment and there's the note I put in on the transaction history. Grandparents paid extra for future fees. So now I know which family it is. So if I've posted fees, I can go in and apply them or link them to that payment so it's not gonna be um, unapplied anymore. And then that $250 is gonna show up in the proper category one. So that's a great way to find these on a regular basis. Now you notice, I think, maybe you notice, we had the Kennedy family. I wanna flip back to that one for a minute. And wow, shouldn't that have showed up as unapplied credit? And where is that money? Well, remember, if you look at this, this is a February date range, and I only ran that report in March. So if you don't do this on a consistent basis, or you haven't done it in a while, then you can go back and use this exact same report. And this time, I'm gonna back it up to February and include February through um, the end of March. And I'm gonna go back and um, change it. Well, we'll go ahead and leave it with the detail, um, just so you can see that it shows you specifically that it's the Kennedy family. And it's gonna break it down, all your March payments, your February payments, all your money, your total revenue is gonna be different because we included a whole nother month. Um, but when we go down to the bottom, your unapplied payments, it shows the Kennedy family and the Morales family. So you can see that, wow, there's $125. There's no note saying it's extra future fees. I might want to go look at that Kennedy family and um, see what's up with that. Oops, wow, I didn't link the fees. And that's going to put it in the proper category. So your paid fees uh, report is a great way to go and find um, credits or, pre um, or uh, payments that haven't been applied yet or things that aren't linked. Another way you can do this is to use, I'm gonna go back and use transaction search. So if we go to transaction search, again, we're gonna do that March month first. So we're looking at the month of March. This is, remember, transaction search. You have something called a special search. You can run called all unapplied credits and unpaid fees not doing anything else but searching on March and unapplied credits and unpaid fees. And now it's gonna show me there's Morales, that's $250 credit that we had on there that hasn't been applied to anything. And this also shows your unpaid fees. Here's the Davidson family. Remember we looked at them at the very beginning, they owed $90 and haven't paid yet. That's your unpaid fees. And that's gonna match up if we go back to our dashboard and look at our aged accounts, we have $90 due in that 31 to 60 day range, and it's the Davidson family, which matches up exactly with the $90 they still owe that they haven't made a payment for. So this um, transaction search option is gonna give you the ability to go in and find those um, unapplied credits and unpaid fees. And I wanna look at, we're gonna do it one more time and show you also, if we go ahead and back it up all the way to February, 
remember that's where that one family, their balance is zero, but their stuff wasn't linked up the way it should be. If we go all the way down and do that special search, uh, all unapplied, whew, unapplied credits and unpaid fees, this is where you're gonna see um, that the Kennedy family appears again. And what's really cool about this, and I, this is what I was saving the um, Kennedy family for, and kind of moving into relinking fees, if I run this report and see, wow, the Kennedy family, their balance is zero, but they've got this $125 payment um, that's unapplied. And if I do their math, wow, $50, $100, $125, their fees just weren't linked. You can fix it right from this report. If you click on the blue edit pencil, just like we did earlier, you're doing it from this report, you can go in and reapply payment right here. Again, I showed you earlier, you can put your cursor in and click right here, or I'm just gonna say apply to oldest fees first. I know the balance is gonna zero out. So if I do it that way, it puts that amount in each of those apply amount columns. And when I save it, all of a sudden the Kennedy family disappears all this off of the um, all credits um, or the all <laughs> the special search of all um, credits and unpaid fees and if we look at that Kennedy family specifically and do a refresh um, then we will actually be able to see that the Kennedy family is now no more pink and green so we fixed it on the report and now the Kennedy family is clear. And you can keep working right here. Now the Morales family doesn't have any fees posted yet, so you're gonna have to wait till that is until they have a fee before you can correct it. And the Davidson family hasn't paid tuition or paid made a payment yet, so you can't fix that one. But that shows you which families you're keeping an eye out for as you're going through correcting things. And that's the easy way to go in and relink your fees. All right, and then just to show you kind of just the difference, if we go back in and um, we run that uh, paid fees report, and we're gonna back it all the way back up to February, so we catch that Kennedy family that was there. And we're gonna show detail. and go all the way to the bottom because we know that's where our unapplied amounts were. You can see it's just the Morales family. Even though you can see up top, I ran it February and March, the Kennedy family's been corrected. So this is gonna show immediately on your reporting, which leads us to report reconciliation. All right, so as you're looking at these reports, um, we've got a couple things to take into consideration. If you are a single location organization, um, you only have one location, um, one, one bank account, um, a couple of things that you can do, uh, you may not have to worry about money transferring between different locations, things like that, but you still wanna make sure that your numbers are consistent. And there are a few reports you can use to help you do that, particularly if multiple people post fees and process payments, and if you have um, things done over a span of time. If you go to reports and click on the transactions financials, we've got a whole entire section of who has paid reports. And these are some of your revenue reports. I really love um, and recommend the deposit slip. Think of this kind of old school, uh, when you go into the bank and you make a payment, um, or you make a deposit rather, and you're able to go in and see um, your money breakdown. Again, we're gonna just run this for the month of March, keep it consistent. And this is gonna break down my revenue that I received in March by payment method. What was a bank draft? What was cash? What was check? What was American Express? And if you notice that $8,260.11 is the exact same as it was on that paid fees report, you should be consistent. Instead of showing it by category one though, it's showing it by payment method. So you're able to follow that and check for consistencies um, among your revenue. Um, we looked at the paid fees report. That's a great one for um, looking for revenue by category one. 
I also really like um, the revenue summary. Now the revenue summary, I always joke a little bit about this and I say, if you're gonna do this and you've never done this before, if you are an organization that gives lots of discounts and have never really sat down and done the math, you might wanna have a glass of wine, maybe a bottle if you do a lot of discounting. If you do a whole lot of discounting for your families, I'm gonna recommend some tequila. Um, and run this report for that same time frame because this one report is going to be the one that shows you not only is it going to show you your revenue it's going to show you how much discounting you did during that same time frame so you can see up here it's for the month of march this one breaks it down by category one so we've still got your ballet your cheer but it also breaks it down by your category twos and threes if you are utilizing those so you can see for ballet i've got um, a ballet subtotal of twelve hundred and fifty four dollars and fifty cents but a hundred of that came from my beginner level um, and 93201 came from my intermediate level because those are my category twos that I'm using for my um, classes. So it's going to break that down even more. And if you look on the revenue summary, unapplied payments is at the very top instead of the bottom. And you see that same $250 right there hasn't been applied yet. Now, I mentioned the discounting. So if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is where you're going to see my total revenue was $8,260.11, which is what it should be. It matches the deposit summary or the deposit slip and the paid fee summary. My discounts are $1,466.09. That means during the month of March, um, for all of the revenue I received, based on the discounts I have set up, I discounted $1,466. So I could have made almost an extra $1,500 a month if I didn't have discounts in place. A lot of the organizations, if you've not looked at this before, this is so beneficial in helping you see where your money's going. Um, if you think your tuition structure is one thing and you're not seeing that in the revenue reports, um, I will tell you I have worked with organizations a couple of times where their discount column is more than their revenue column. And that may be on purpose and you may want to be doing that, but if your revenue's not quite what you think it should be, sometimes come in and check this report and check out your discounting because this is the one that's going to show you that one. And it's a great tool for making sure all of your money is being um, tracked and going to the right place. All right, so we've talked about single location, but what if you're an organization that has multiple locations? Um, you have maybe three locations or two locations. Maybe you have uh, three locations and the money needs to go to three separate bank accounts because um, you keep the money separate. Maybe you have a gymnastics organization and a swim organization and a dance organization all under one parent organization and you wanna keep that um, separate. We also have some reconciliation reports that will help you with multiple locations. If you notice on the revenue summary, I went with show me all transactions for the um, single location. You can run these where you're running um, or you're limiting the results to fees just from certain locations where you're going to choose the fee location or the class event location. And you can do it where you're limiting the results to payments from certain locations. And we're going to look, um, you can do this with the paid fees and the revenue summary, but we're going to look at a couple of other reports um, to do this. And one thing I want to point out, if you don't remember, or if you weren't aware, when a family, we'll go back and look at the Alexander family um, and look at their summary tab, families are assigned a location. And when a payment is made, their location is where their payment money goes. Even though um, this particular family, if we look at Justin, and I know this without going to a ton more extra screens, I know that um, these go to the cheer location because these are cheer classes 
set up under the cheer location in my database because I use this for training my locations rather than being a physical are I have a dance location a cheer location uh, um, dojo location a music location etc so even though these are cheer classes that are assigned to a cheer location this family was originally set up in the dojo location so that means the classes the tuition that's received should go for cheer because i'm multi-location but the payment actually goes to dojo and the way you're going to see that information and separate it and work on reconciling is to go to reports transactions financials and if you click on all we have a section called revenue reconciliation reports and these are going to show you um, where that money's going based on a certain certain criteria. Your reconciliation summary, if I'm going to again run it for the month of March. Da, 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 I gotta find that 31. Click run report. This is going to actually tell me, again, if I have different bank accounts or I just want to track what's being made. $165 was paid to dance because the families were assigned to dance, but the classes they took were in cheer. $367.36 was paid to gymnastics because those families were assigned to a gymnastics location, but their kids took classes that amounted to cheer. So it's going to give you the amount that you need to transfer if you have separate bank accounts. So it's a great tool for helping you keep track by location. You also, um, we're going to go back, let me find it this way. I think I clicked on the different screens. We'll go back to our reconciliation report. Hold tight, being a little slow. Let me see, I think this is the tab. We'll see if that pulls it up, baby. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna pull it by location. And um, I don't have my run report button, so I'm gonna select that, that date one more time. I click run report, and this is gonna break down that same money by location. And this is actually gonna um, break it down into the cheer center they received $189 payments, families that were assigned to that location, but they had $973.38 worth of money from kids taking classes there. And that difference, that negative 784.16 is going to be, oh, I got lots of reports. Let me make sure I find, click on the right one. That difference is gonna be um, all of these cheers added up right there. So you're able to come in and see how much money you need to move between locations. Or if you want to just see, is my cheer location making me money? You can see it that way. You can also pull using the revenue reconciliation report, revenue specifically by location. This is going to show you um, and break it down by family, the payments and fees paid for each specific location. So here's the cheer money, and it's gonna break it down for you specifically. And then you can also look at the revenue by family. And the family revenue is gonna show you specifically what each family is. So the Barker family, um, they had a lot of dance classes, and that's where they're paid. If we look at the Bath family, they had some um, swim classes, dance class, another swim class, and it's going to break it down so you can see where those kids are taking classes. So you can separate that out by family as well. So we have a number of different ways you can get in there and make sure your money is going to the right place and make sure that you're finding all those unpaid fees and unapplied credits and getting them cleaned up before the next time you post tuition. and. Uh, process payments. All right, Marie, I think that was a whole lot of mouthful and a whole lot of talking by me. So I want to give you guys an opportunity to ask some questions. Um, Marie and I will do our best to answer um, whatever questions you have. 
in the event that it's something um, I'm not quite skilled at or haven't had a lot of time to practice with or Marie can't, we may um, just recommend you contact support uh, just so you can have somebody set up a screen share and spend some dedicated time in your database. But um, we would love if you have questions, if you want to go ahead and ask those, we would love to hear from you. Hey, Tammy. So if you can, can you just pop back to that revenue summary report? Absolutely. Hmm. So Trent had, asked, Trent had asked the question, can you see what is discounted on the revenue summary or just an I, overall discount? I think it is just an overall, and I'm going to yeah. run a new one just because I don't um, I have 30 tabs open now. <laughs> yeah, I so I, I think... Is. I think his question is basically if, say, you had multiple discounts, is it going to show which discount it is? I so it I isn't overall. I, no, it just only I breaks know. it down by category. Like, but I just wanted to show him how he can still see it on the categories in case they miss that, that it's not only at the bottom of the page. Oh, 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 oh I know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom here. You see, here's the tally of it, the 146609, but it breaks it down. This discount column runs the whole page. So you can see that $252.99 was in tumbling, $30 was in swim. Um, I didn't have anything for registration fees. I had $48 for music. So you can see it by category one. It is not going to break it down here by family, though, if that's what you're looking for. Yeah, I wasn't sure if it was that or if he was looking to see if he had different discounts, if it would uh, break um, them down I'm, again. I don't think so, but I'm curious if we uh, did a, and I, I'm kind of shooting off the cuff here, so I don't know if it will do this. Um, if we did a paid fees uh, detail, I know it won't show, let me see. While you're doing that, we did have another question come in asking if parents can, can pay more uh, in the parent portal, and they can. So if you go to tools, parent portal, your settings, it's under the fees and payments. Right. So there and are different options. You, and I'll show you go that ahead. in just a moment. So on the paid fees detail, um, to his question, you're, it's not going to tally it for you, but if you run paid fees detail, it will show you like Barker family had these discounts and these discounts. There is no discount total per family, um, but you can look at the notes to see where discounts came from. If you were trying to go back and search, you know, maybe one category one had significantly more. That's going to be, but you're going to have to do a little manual man manipulation with that. Um, okay. That's as close as I can get for that. Okay, so yes, parents can pay more than the amount due from the parent portal if you give them that permission. So you would go to Tools, Parent Portal, just like Marie was saying, click on your settings, and Marie, help me not miss it. Um, okay, so under the fees yep. and payments section, portal users can. You have four options, only pay balance in full, select which fees to pay in full, select which fees to pay in full or impartial, or change the payment amount in the payment supply to you as fees. That fourth option, change payment amount, um, is the only option that will allow them to change more from the parent portal. So if you want them to be able to pay ahead, um, you need to make that fourth, make sure that fourth option is selected. Just remember that you need to be running those searches ahead of time and link them to fees before you process payments and get things kind of mismatched. All right, what's next, Marie? The question is, what to do when their class credit expires and how to clear that in transaction. So if you give them a class credit, Marie, how, make sure I'm right on this. If you give them a class credit and it's only good for a certain amount of time, really, I'm thinking the easiest thing was once that deadline hits, you just go and delete it, correct? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, just go in and delete that credit if they decide not to use it. Um, 
Let's see. And you could, if you wanted to keep a, keep a line item on the transaction history so that it proved that you did it, you could click on the blue pencil and edit the transaction to zero dollars and put in a note, credit expired on April 2nd, um, credit removed. And that would still keep a line item, it would just be a zero line item. Um, all right, next. Okay, so this is a fun one. Oh, is well. <laughs> there a way to mass, <laughs> mass apply credits, or do you have to manage slash apply them individually? And then they just go on to say, I'm asking because we're using the Metzger method for collecting tuition during the COVID closures, which will result in credits for hundreds of families in our database needing to be applied over a several month period. Okay, so Marie, I need help with this one because I know that has been a topic of discussion on the Jackrabbit staff side, but this is where I've probably been a little bit busier than I should be um, and trying to keep track of what things are being done um, ahead of time and what things are coming. Do you know on this It one? is, yeah, it is coming. Uh, we were told yesterday in support that is one of the things that are being worked on that we are allowed to share. So uh, this person didn't give their name, but if you just hold tight, uh, our product team is working on this right now. So if you just kind of wait it out a little bit, then we should be able to, you'll be able to mass supply credits. And that's something, you know, if you don't see anything, you know, next week or the week after, um, definitely reach out to support and ask that question. Because um, as soon as it has been released and it's out there, our support team is usually on the ball working on it. If they haven't figured it out yet, they sure will. And let's just see awesome. here. Thank the you, next Ray. one is, you're welcome. Uh, Trent says, thanks for his last answer. And then he just said, I'm just trying to make sense of what I see. If I want to add the discount to the revenue, mm -hmm. that would be what I would make if I had not done any discounting, correct? Yes. He said, gauging if I need to have wine or tequila. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey Trent, let me know and we can have a Zoom happy hour together. Um, and, but yes, that would be the ideal. So if we go back and uh, if I pick, let me see if I can find the revenue summary here. Um, if I scroll down to the bottom, 82.60.11 is what I literally physically brought in that's in my bank account. The 14.6609 is what I would have made if I didn't have discounting in progress or discounting set up. And sometimes, um, you know, depending on your philosophy, you may not want to get rid of all of it, but you may not realize you're giving away quite as much as you are. Um, so adding those two together would be your total potential revenue for the month of March. Fantastic. All right. Any other questions? Um, looks like None. looks like we're clear, but I want to give you just another moment or two and um, just thank you guys again. Our uh, product team and developers are working hard to get out some extra enhancements to let you know um, things that are coming, hopefully in the near future, so that um, once we're able to get back out there, um, that there will be some extra um, information to help you get up and rolling really quickly. And um, just encourage you, if you haven't checked out the COVID-19 resources page that Marie showed, we've got a couple of other webinars on there that um, really, uh, we did a panel discussion last week with some organizations about how they're taking Thing on, things online virtually and uh, getting that out there. And for those of you, watch for information, uh, hook up on the Facebook page and connections. I am working really hard um, to get the, we were supposed to have a basics class offered in April in a couple of weeks and a level up class, um, which is our Beyond the Basics class for 2020. Um, two of them offered in May at physical locations, and we are working really hard to get those revamped and offered virtually um, in May. So stay tuned, watch for that. Um, see if we can't uh, take it to the virtual classroom and keep you guys up to speed. So, all right, Marie, any more questions? 
Uh, no, I don't see any more. That is it, Tammy. Awesome job. All right. All right. Well, some thank yous coming in. Yay. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys. All right, okay, Marie, we will I'm chat soon, everybody. Okay, we will chat soon, everyone. So just a reminder, somebody did ask you guys will all receive a recording of this webinar. You should see it in your inbox tomorrow. So in case you need to share that with any of your staff. Stay safe, everybody, and we will chat soon.